welcome to this masterclass. The goal that we have for today's masterclass is I get to sort of pick the brains of these individuals and understand what is it that they believe are the secrets to success in creating change in people's lives. It doesn't matter what you're coaching, whether it be nutrition, female empowerment, leadership and business strategy. Strategy. The reality is people are held back by very similar things. I think there's a good lesson in that for everyone that's an aspiring coach. So I want to understand what makes these people tick. I want to understand what are the differences that they see that make the difference in somebody that creates success and someone that doesn't. Beyond that as well, though, I also want to dig deep into understanding how they started their businesses. They're all doing really well now. And, uh, you know, they, it it can sometimes feel like two completely different lives when you're struggling to start as a coach to when you then become a successful coach. And I want to understand what was that tipping point and how did they get their first couple of clients and how did they come to be able on you know, the call with me today. And I've got Kevin Gonzalez by Coached by Kevin, who's a leadership and strategy coach. You are um, you're a leadership and strategist, a leadership and life strategist in a lot of different ways. And I know you coach not only women, but also men as well. So I'm interested to get more of a masculine take on this as well. You know, same, same principle, what got you into coaching and what do you see as being some of the biggest blocks or barriers that hold your clients back in being able to step up and achieve the goals they want to achieve, Kevin? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I guess um, some of the biggest barriers that I have seen in real life with coaching one-on-one -on -one clients is that you can give them the strategies, you can give them the tools of um, how to basically have a, a good strategy to have a good, uh, to have a thriving coaching business. However, without leadership or kind of like the core foundations and principles, then yes. these tools are absolutely useless. And I yeah. think um, with the whole coaching space these days, um, uh, a lot of people forget that it's about relationship. It's all about relationship building, um, even negotiations, even about selling, even about marketing as well. It's all about creating a relationship with your target audience and whatnot. And I feel like, um, a lot of coaches have the amazing ability to transform lives. However, they don't have the ability, they don't necessarily have um, uh, a good ability on the people skills because somehow it kind of gets pushed down a little bit. Um, and that's what I want to remind them about. Even when um, their, coaching, um, their coaching business actually starts thriving and whatnot as well, you're still going to be leading a team. You're still managing a team and whatnot as well. And I, I believe that if you want a thriving and successful coaching business, then you've got to be in the business of um, a human, um, a human resources business. Yeah, you know sure. what I mean? So if you're empowering your team, if you are empowering your audience, your clients um, as well, and you're um, basically getting them to jump on your vision and leading them, it makes the whole process much more easier. And I feel like a lot of coaches do forget that sometimes. And they're all about just, um, Creating transformation, but they right? Correct, yeah, correct. They're, yeah. they're used to working in that space. Talk to me about this, Kevin. You know, for if, if for people that are watching in Australia, the stats are pretty significant. Which is there's 2.1 million companies in Australia. Mm. Of that, about 1.2 million have one employee. About 800,000 have between one and 20, and then only 100,000 have more than 20 employees. So from a cultural perspective, the vast majority of businesses in Australia, and these numbers are pretty well replicated in the UK, in the US, in Canada, et cetera. It's pretty consistent. Most businesses are small businesses. They're individual practitioners, right? Particularly yeah. in the coaching world. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the importance of self-leadership, self-reliance, your ability to set goals and deadlines? And you know, many things the ladies were talking about before around mm -hmm. personal rituals. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the importance of, of self-leadership. Because if you can't lead yourself, you're never going to yeah. build a successful business. You'll never have a team because you won't have enough money. Absolutely. Uh, talk to me a bit about that. Yeah, so self-leadership is absolutely important. You have to learn how to lead yourself first, and that means doing the hard things. And there's uh, something that I like to coach my clients on is uh, basically to seek discomfort, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, they're able to um, facilitate great change and transformation to their clients. However, some of them are so fearful to get into sales calls, right? They're fearful to get into a sales call. They don't, um, they don't want to charge um, premium prices of what they're worth. And if they want to be the example of being a leader in the industry, they're not even leading themselves first because they don't have that value of themselves or how they see themselves. Um, it's not in alignment with what they're doing as a business. Yes. So <clears throat> that's absolutely the first step that um, is absolutely crucial. And a lot of people do forget that they get the certification and whatnot, but then they don't want to jump on the sales calls when in reality, they're helping to fix the mindset as well. Okay. Let's um, let's pre um, let's actually um, eat a bit of our, um, uh, eat from our plate and actually utilize this whole mindset thing and take it back to the principles of, okay, if I'm not actually getting on the sales calls with these guys, if I'm not um, acting uh, or if I'm not being uh, being a leader in my business, 
Yeah. How am I supposed to actually lead these other people yeah. when I start to scale and actually um, start yeah. to hire people as well? What was your biggest friction point getting started in business? Uh, I guess for me, it was the, uh, I love how um, the vibe here is just like uh, the masculine and feminine energy. And I guess for <laughs> me, the big realization for me was there's a time and place where the masculine needs to shine more than the, um, the feminine energy. Um, and it just goes through everything in your practice, right? So when you're in a sales call, you, know, you have to know when to listen and you have to know when to push. So it's kind of like having that um, dance of masculine and feminine as well. Um, absolutely love yes. that. That was the, um, that was the friction point for me where I didn't know. I was just like the whole spirituality movement these days. Um, there's just a bit, been an increase of um, feminine energy, but I feel like some masculine energy needs to surface as well because it's all about yin and yang. Um, and having that balance and knowing when to utilize it uh, that was the friction point for me. And that was moving the needle in my business. Like the yes, the law of attraction can attract the customers to you, but someone still needs to close them. Someone still needs to enroll them into your program. Right. Um, yes. And I feel like that's where the masculine needs to come out um, and where the balance ensures, uh, ensures as well. Yeah. Okay. So with that in mind, I guess probably a good transition point here is to talk about getting your first couple of clients. So for a lot of our people that are getting started in business, that first client, that first couple of clients is one of the hardest things. And you guys have all that experience getting clients before, you know, hence why we're having this call. So I'm interested to know what strategies you used and what you would recommend for somebody getting started, getting out there, how they would do that, and maybe how they would do that with ads or without ads, you know, how you would go about making that happen. Because I think if you go, oh, if, 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 if Elizabeth did it then i can do it in that similar way or maybe i connect with the way that jermaine does i think there's some value in all of that what i'm also interested to know as part of that though is not just how did you do it but obviously what you learn in that process about yourself and for me i think that as a coach when you're starting your business you start with a foundation set of skills as as coaches as healers as practitioners whatever that world looks like that's only half of the battle though. The other half of the of the art form or the craft is knowing how to then market and sell that. It's the business skills. So having your technical skills, having your business skills. I think most people overlook those. And particularly the coaches, they didn't get into this to make money. They did it because they believe that this is what they put on the planet to do. So as you mentioned, Kevin, there's that yin and that yang. And it's normally, you know, there's the, there's the balancing or the counteracting of that. For me, there was a moment, I remember getting started and I remember doing an event at the Tradewinds Hotel in Fremantle. And if anyone's from WA that's listening, they'll know where that is. And uh, I remember running an event there and I made $30,000 on a Saturday. And, you know, since then, I've gone on to make hundreds of thousands, over 500000 in a single day, a million dollars in a single month. But those days mean nothing. Those months mean nothing by comparison to that $30,000 Saturday. Because for me, that was the day where I said to myself, I can do this. It was the, the moment where, for want of a better word, I burned the bridges or burned the boats. And I said, I'm going to fully commit myself to this purpose because I didn't fully understood or believe that it was possible up until that moment for me to do this full time, for this to be my, 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 my vocation, effectively, this, for this to be my, my, my mission in life economically. Because we live in a material world and we have to be, you know, put food on the table. So for you, start with you, Kevin. What did you do as, as, a, as a series of steps or strategies? Maybe you did one thing, maybe you did a couple to get your first couple of clients on board. And what would you recommend to a group of people that are at home? They go, I've got passion, I've got talent, I've got skill, I want to make a difference in the world and I want to get paid to do what I love. What would you say is the, the thing they should do to get their first five or 10 paid clients? Uh, for me, I wanted to utilize my strengths. I found out that, that I was good in video. So I was um, doing a lot of lives. I was doing a lot of um, YouTube um, and basically engaging with the people that resonated with the video. But with that being said as well, it kind of attracted those people who were res resonating with my message. However, yes. it was still the core principle of relationship building after that because it wasn't a done deal yet. So there was a lot of nurturing. There was a lot of um, voice messages being sent out, um, um, treating them like a human. Um, and not just trying to like sell them something and go straight into, okay, what's, um, what's the situation or the obstacle that is um, in your business right now, right? Yeah. There's a lot of pitching uh, involved, but cut that out, um, go past the crock brain into um, basically um, the human side of things. And it makes it so much easier. So yeah, I, I guess to simplify that relationship building is the core of getting your first clients, because even if your audience is a huge or even small when you create that relationship with them, they resonate with you and it's much more easier to basically enroll them into uh, my program. Yeah. 
So Kevin, I just want to drill down on that a little bit. Sure. So I, I know there's a lot of coaches out there that have no problems in creating that connection. I mean, I've, mm. obviously there's people that struggle with that, but mm. most people are pretty good at having a conversation. Where I see a lot of coaches struggle, and I'm interested to know if the leaders have struggled with this as well, I know I certainly did, was that transition moment. So it's like, I've had a conversation and yeah. I know I can help this person, but then how do I bring up what I feel is like the elephant in the room, which is buy my stuff, right? So obviously there's an assumption in place, yes, that they you can help them and that they want what it is you're doing. You're not just sliding into their DMs and pitching them your your uh, your pyramid scheme, right? But the idea Absolutely. is that you're giving them some value. So yeah. what are some go-to lines or some reference points or how do you know when the temperature is right, so to speak, when the pulse mm. is beating enough for you to go, cool, I think like we can transition this conversation. Do you yeah. do that in Messenger or do you get them onto a phone call? How do you take care of that? Yeah, I love that question. Basically, uh, a lot of a lot of um, the problems with the um, people that I speak to, they have symptom level um, problems, and I like to speak to that symptom level problems that they may may be dealing with. And it's basically just um, the same thing as coaching a client, right? People are going to give you surface level answers, but it's that it, in that relationship building and gaining that trust until they start to reveal the deeper aspects of things as what's really holding them back. And once you really find that and, uh, and basically get that out of them. Uh, I like to create a knowledge gap. Okay. Have you actually um, thought about anchoring? You know what I mean? Uh, a, a, a specific strategy on um, what you can utilize and yeah. make them aware of that unaware problem that may be persistent in what they're experiencing with. And then yeah. that transition would then um, go into the call because it would be way too, um, it would be to be a way too lengthy process to um, type it all out on messenger chat. And it makes it a much smoother, smoother transition onto that call uh, and basically help them enroll them there. Fantastic. Look, I've absolutely loved our conversation today. I think everyone would have got a lot of different guidance. Uh, for everyone that's at home, if you've got some questions or if you'd like to be able to connect with the people that we've got on the call, we will put up in the show notes links to bios and all that sort of stuff as well. But just as a quick reference point, Kevin, if we want to find out more about you, where do we go? Yeah, I'm very active on Facebook. Uh, yeah. So uh, Kevin K. Gonzalez on Facebook. Excellent. Um, and just typed in coach by Kevin on um, the search and I should appear there. Thank you so much for your time, energy and effort and your wisdom. We appreciate it deeply. It's enormously inspiring to connect with you and I've absolutely loved the time. So thank you so much. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to shoot them through and I will pass them on to the relevant people. Until we see you live or online, be bold, have fun, make an impact. And we'll see you on the wild side. Good afternoon, good evening and good night. Hey.